Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Uh, today we are in Santa Clarita, California. Uh, we're at a friend of mine's house, so that's why I'm able to record for you guys. Sorry we haven't been able to get a video out there. Uh, it's, as you can imagine, it's not very easy to go and record in customers' homes, but uh, I digress. Anyway, there is a Samsung refrigerator, uh, typical issue. You guys might have seen this before. Uh, this is for the back panel failure. Uh, we have that back panel already ordered. Uh, this is actually the third time I've been to the property. Um, just because we try to do a repair without replacing the back panel, um, and I'll kind of explain how we do that if you do want to try it before you order the back panel. Um, but today we have a uh, model number, uh, let's see here. We have model number Romeo Foxtrot 31 Foxtrot Mike. Echo, Sierra Bravo, Sierra Romeo. So if you have uh, pretty much any refrigerator that looks similar to this or any Samsung that has a twin cooling back panel system, uh, you're pretty much gonna have almost an identical repair. So uh, yeah, don't get overwhelmed. It's super simple. You can do this DIY completely by yourself. Um, so let's just get started. As you guys can see, the refrigerator is completely empty. We had the customer emptied out and uh, kind of get it all cleaned up before we were here. So we have pretty much all the food on the counter behind us here. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start taking the shelves out to replace this back panel. And while I'm doing that, I'll kind of talk about the diagnostic process and how uh, we determined that this was the failure and why we're replacing this back panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take all these uh, panels off and just kind of lift up and slide out if you need a tutorial how to take these off, I don't think you should be doing this repair yourself. But, uh, but if you do need a video on that, let me know. So the bottom panel has uh, two tabs here and uh, you basically have to press them. They're right over these wheels. So you wanna press on these two tabs on both sides and then lift. Now this is gonna pop out like this and then once you have it off, you're just gonna slide it out. You're gonna tilt it up on the right-hand side and then take it out horizontally, or I mean vertically, and then set it aside. Now that we have uh, the shelves and all the panels removed, we're gonna go ahead and start disassembling this back panel. Uh, the back panel is gonna consist of just a regular Phillips head and also a, a quarter inch Head. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start the removal process here. I got my impact. If you don't have an impact, you can just use a handheld. It's not screwed in that crazy that you're going to need an impact. And then just a regular uh, quarter inch, quarter inch. So one thing you'll need, and again, to be DIY friendly, uh, you can use pretty much anything that is like a pick. You can use a fork or whatever you need to kind of get this off. There's a little tab right here. You just need something to pry. I'm using just a, a little hook. You're gonna get in there, pry it off, and then that's gonna come off. There's a Phillips head screw hiding behind there. We're gonna go ahead and use our impact and take that screw out. Pull that one off right there. There's another little screw on the the left side of this tab to take this little metal grommet off. You don't need to take it off, but I just don't like it being in the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it off. And I just leave my screws in the refrigerator here. Take that off. There's another, uh, another one down here as well. And then we're just gonna slide this back panel. It's kind of stuck. You could use a little pry tool again. Pull it towards us and then it comes right off. And actually on this one, we actually don't need the quarter inch because the, the bottom ones are Phillips as well. Sometimes they can be quarter inch. And the screws on the bottom, the bottom two screws, the one on the left and the one on the right, uh, they're smaller. So 
Just make sure you don't get that mistaken. The ones that are holding the beam in the middle, they're longer. Um, they're about almost two inches long. Oh, not two inches, maybe an inch and a half. And then these are about maybe a quarter of an inch or something. They're, they're a lot shorter. So don't mix those up. I'm gonna set that aside. So I wanna discuss a little bit why we're replacing this back panel. Now it's a really common failure with these refrigerators that you get ice buildup on the back and then you have either water leaking inside of the unit or basically the cooling has stopped. You'll, your freezer will be working, but then um, the refrigerator section or the fresh food section will not be working. So it's a very, very common issue, not only with Samsung's, um, other brands that have a back panel similar to this, get ice buildup. You might see ice coming out of these ports maybe up here, all the way up here sometimes as well. You'll have basically the sides of these panels kind of warping. They'll be almost like completely out like this because the ice is pushing it off. So I can even see there's some ice on the side here. There's moisture, you guys can see my hand. So all of this moisture is coming from somewhere. So that's the number one thing that we have to address. We're like, okay, what's going on? Our, our door seals uh, have a tear on it. We check the door seals, none of the door se seals have any major tears that are going to cause condensation. Are we having any type of an air leak? Are the customers leaving the refrigerator door open or something along those lines? So that's the number one thing that we want to address is where is that moisture coming from? Because a refrigerator, especially in this area, has no water. Our water reservoir is here on the bottom. If it was leaking, it would flood. So we're having just moisture buildup. So once you have it on, you want to address it and kind of make sure that that's not what's causing the back panel to freeze up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the back panel. You wanna make sure to do this very slowly because if it's frozen in the back, all right, sorry about that, the light turned off, so I had to turn it back on. But if the back panel is frozen, then you want to have the customer defrost the refrigerator 24 hours prior to removing the back panel, so we're gonna make sure the, the back panel isn't frozen. Usually we'll have the client defrost it, but they weren't having crazy frost buildup last time, so I was able to remove it without having them defrost it. But uh, we're gonna give it a go right now. We're gonna start on the bottom here, start prying on the panel. And looks like we do have it frozen pretty good on here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our steamer and we're gonna start steaming the sides of it so we can get it, uh, get it pried open here. So we have our steamer here and we have our steamer running trying to get everything defrosted as much as we can so we can pull this back panel off. So we have our steamer here. Uh, I can make you guys, I could give you guys a link to this uh, on, this is something we bought on Amazon. They're about, I think about 40 or $50. And they're like steam cleaners that you can use pretty much for your household as well. It's a good tool to have if you want to clean your stove, any grease or anything. But it's also good for defrosting um, ice. Um, another thing you can use, you can use a space heater, but you want to put it on low and maybe close the doors a little bit so it can kind of defrost over time. But if you're going to do that, just make sure you unplug the refrigerator or turn it off on your breaker so uh, the refrigerator isn't constantly running. Right now, um, it is good practice to turn off the refrigerator while you're doing any work on your refrigerator. Yes, yeah, specifically in this situation, uh, I didn't, so we have uh, good lighting in here, uh, so I can show you guys the video. But uh, when we get around the electronic components, uh, I'll show you guys just to be, be careful on how you're working on it. They are watertight, but um, just, be, uh, just be cautious. So we're gonna go ahead and use our steamer, and we're gonna slowly start steaming. Sides here. This back panel uh, comes in two pieces. You have the plastic in the front and then you have the foam on the rest of the assembly on the back side. Um, so if you're trying to peel it off and you see that the foam is not coming off with the actual uh, panel, then you know it's frozen really, really good and you don't want to keep pulling on it because you have your refrigerant lines and everything in the back with your evaporator coil. So you don't want to rip it out and start having a sealed system leak. Um, we don't want any refrigerant leaking in here, especially on some of the newer Samsungs, the refrigerant is flammable. So we don't want to be in a hazardous situation either. Um, it's not going to just burst into flames or anything like that, but you know, you just want to be cautious. It is a flammable refrigerant. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, 
slowly pry it. Doing the ports here as well. And you can take the attachment off. Get in all the holes. Slowly start prying this side. Oh, there you go. Came off. All right. So now that we got this back panel off, we're gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna actually show you guys what's going on here. Um, the wiring on this side, as you guys can see, is still attached. So I'm gonna try to be careful here. I don't want to tug on it too much. But you guys can see it's completely frozen all around uh, the fan and. Pretty much the entire back panel here is pretty frozen. So last time I checked the heating element and as you guys can see the heating element is not the culprit. The heating element is doing its job. It's completely defrosted in this area. Um, they do sell an aftermarket heater that you can put up in this top area to basically um, create more heat up there to melt the ice. But to be honest, it's really not necessary. It's the back panel that's the issue. It's not allowing the heat to basically get to the fan area because it's pretty much warped all around. Now our drain is, is frozen as well, so that's a culprit in that sense. But I mean, as you guys can see, when it's melting, it's pretty much cleaning up the entire evaporator. So we're gonna go ahead, use our steamer and start defrosting around the electrical connections and everything. And then again, you wanna do this when the refrigerator is turned off, just for good practice. But again, just so we have good lighting in here, I'm going to do it without it. Um, if you know what you're doing and you don't spray directly into the connectors, you should be just fine. So when I'm defrosting, I'm defrosting around the connectors. I'm not defrosting directly on the connectors because I don't want any water intrusion. Again, you're going to be pretty, pretty much okay, but just in case there's some damage on the wires or anything, it's good practice to do it around so you're not just uh, spraying water directly into the connectors or hot water. So once I have the connectors defrosted pretty well, I'm gonna start removing them. So I'm gonna actually bring the camera inside the refrigerator here so you guys get a better look. So what we're gonna do, the first connector that we're gonna remove is gonna be this blue connector here with the yellow cable. As you guys can see, the wire is tugging almost full extension um, and basically what you do there's a little tab on the bottom you press it as you guys can see right there and then it pulls right out the next one we're going to remove is going to be this connector right here the white one same thing there's a tab on the left hand side here we're going to press it wiggle it and if uh, if you do see that it's not coming out it means there's probably still some frost around it so grab your steamer don't force it and just uh, give it a good little defrost around it. <clears throat> and a little bit underneath as well. Now we'll try it one more time here. There we go. So I wanted to go ahead and briefly uh, talk about these two back panels and basically why this happens because um, like I said, it's a pretty common issue. Um, so this is the new panel here. Uh, this is part number Delta Alpha 97-13757 Alpha. And uh, you can find these back panels uh, and what they are for you uh, basically online. You can look it up on searspartsdirect.com and you just put your serial number and basically you'll be able to find this part number specifically for your unit. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open it up just so you guys have a side-by-side -side comparison. And the back panel pretty much comes exactly how you see the other one here. It's fully assembled, has the fan, has everything uh, inside ready to be installed. So I'm gonna take the bubble wrap off here and show you guys. So, as you guys can see, brand new panel comparison to the old one. And you're gonna see 
the difference between the two and basically why we're having this issue. There's gonna be warping on the panels here. These foam seals all around are gonna have warping and you're basically, you're having air infiltration that is coming into the fan before the heater is able to bring heat up into the fan area to defrost the ice. So when, they, when I tell you they sell an aftermarket heater that basically heats up this area, that is like a Band-Aid to something that is not the real failure here. The real, the real failure is gonna be the panel itself that is not letting heat from the actual fan and the, uh, from the actual the heating element get up into this area to basically defrost the fan area because there, there is no heater up here. Would I want it to have a heater from the factory? Yes, I would love it for it to have a heater from the factory up in this area, but you know this is the design and when they built it, they, I guess they didn't keep in mind that maybe these will wear from ice over time or whatever the circumstance might be. So before we do get started, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up defrosting all the ice here. I'll probably time lapse this, you guys don't really need to see this, but I just wanna clean up all the built up ice before uh, we install the new back panel and also the drain in the bottom here. And I'll talk about this drain and why this gets all frozen and clogged here in a second but uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean this out. And what you can also do if you want a quick result, you can actually turn your steamer backwards and it won't spray steam out, it'll, uh, it'll spray boiling water out. So just be careful around the refrigerant lines and everything and make sure you're doing it only on the ice, don't do it on the plastic, you might melt the plastic if you do it this way. So as you guys can see, my steamer is pretty much already empty. So I'm gonna go refill it, get it heated up again. And I'm gonna do this a couple times. So we'll, we'll just time lapse it, like I said. All right, so uh, this video was obviously time-lapse while I was defrosting it, but that took a good probably 30 to 45 minutes just to get the bulk of this defrosted. Um, the next thing that we're gonna address is actually gonna be this drain down here. And I'm gonna get you guys really close up as much as possible to kind of discuss why this gets clogged and uh, why it's probably the main culprit to this entire situation. So while it's heating up, I'm gonna adjust this camera here and then uh, we'll get it going. So I have you guys looking straight down uh, the evaporator here uh, to the actual uh, heating element and the drain pan here. So this heating element, uh, which we'll probably show you in a different video if we do have a heating element failure, uh, which is again, very, very rare. We rarely see the heating element on these actually fail. Uh, last time we actually tested the heating oil and it was completely functional. And as you guys can see, there wasn't any ice buildup on the actual evaporator. So we know the heater is working. It's just the top portion was not getting that heat. So as you guys can see, there's, there's water in there and the water is not draining. And basically what this port here is for is the condensation that builds up in a refrigerator, the water has to go somewhere. And where that water goes, it goes on the bottom of the refrigerator where the condenser fan turns on and it evaporates that water back into the atmosphere or back into the, the kitchen and basically goes into the cycle of humidity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear out that drain and we're gonna use the steamer to do that. Um, now, I don't know if this drain is clogged because last time I cleaned it out and also I cleaned it out from the backside, which again, we'll discuss that in another video if that was something that we would need to address. But on this unit, uh, it's not something that we need to do. We're just gonna talk about the back panel here. Um, this might just be frozen just because the heat cycle hasn't started 
and as you guys can see this metal prong goes into the drain and it defrosts the actual drain itself. So I'm going to try to put a little bit of steam in it. If it clears out right away then I know it's just it hasn't uh, hit its defrost cycle yet and the drain isn't clogged but if it does uh, take me a while to clean out this drain then we're going to know that uh, we are going to need to clean it out more. So uh, I'm going to give it a go. Our steamer is ready. So here we go. We're going to put the angle attachment and we're going to put it into the drain and then we're going to give it give it a go. Oh, is it locked? Of course it's locked. Unlock. All right, here we go. Okay, so almost instantly it cleared out. So uh, the drain's not clogged. It's uh, there's still a little bit of ice. Uh, what you can do, how you can check this is actually you can grab a little bit of water and I recommend hot water, but client gave me a bottle of water for drinking, but I'll use a little bit just to show you guys. Put a little bit of water in and you see it just disappears. Put a little bit of water in and it disappears. So the drain is working. The drain is not clogged. We're just going to clean this ice out around it and then we're going to come back to um, putting the back panel on. All right, so now that we have all of the ice cleared up, we're gonna go ahead and bring our new panel in here. And uh, we're gonna start attaching uh, the electrical connections. Uh, don't forget to take off this plastic protective cover on it. Uh, it just says it's on the front of the panel. <clears throat> it's uh, pretty obvious that it needs to be removed. But this is a crash course for all the DIY, dare I say, dummies. But you're not dummies. You just you don't know. So I'm telling you, take off that plastic. We're gonna go ahead, connect the connectors. Blue ones on top, white ones on the bottom. All right, so we're moving right along. We're gonna go ahead and put our back panel on. It's uh, almost completely defrosted. As you guys can see, the refrigerator is still working. I didn't wanna unplug it, obviously, uh, just so I would have light in here and just so I could show you guys what's going on. Uh, but when you are doing this, I do recommend that you unplug the refrigerator. I can't stress that enough. Um, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to tilt the panel diagonally like this, and then we're going to push it up. Let me just uh, adjust the camera just a little bit more here. There we go. You're going to push it up, make sure it gets into that pocket, and you're going to squeeze the bottom part. Now what you're going to do is you're going to slowly apply pressure to the sides until each corner clicks. Top left. Top right. I didn't like how that's sitting there. Push it up again. Apply uh, upward pressure from the bottom here. And I got my hat on, you see, because it's, it's cold in here. Gotta make sure you stay warm. It's, was it flu season? It's winter time. All right, so we have the back panel on. Now we're gonna grab our Phillips head on our impact, we're gonna grab the two little screws. One goes on the bottom right. Give it one little click. Don't over tighten these. They're just pla they're just holding plastic. There's no mechanical anything with these, so just be gentle. So this one, there's only one right way of putting this on. The one that has a little screw hole in the middle here, that's up. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put the top on first, and then we're going to click it into place, just like that. Of course, it gets stuck on me. Come on. All right, let me grab the pry tool here. Pull it out again. Now we're going to use our long screws. They're both the same size, so it doesn't matter which one you put where. Click that in there. Again, not too tight. We're going to go ahead and put our shelf clip thingy. And then our Phillips screw. Again, you don't need to take this off, but I like taking it off because, I don't know, I, just, I like giving myself extra work. It just gets in the way sometimes when it's laying around. So, all right, so we're all set here. Um, now I'm gonna, I'll bring the camera back and uh, I'm gonna clean up the refrigerator. There's a bunch of water in here from the steamer. Um, so I'm gonna grab a towel and do that right now. And then uh, we'll uh, debrief on everything. So this is actually part of the repair. We want to make sure that we wipe down every part of the refrigerator where there is moisture. Having the refrigerator door open introduced a lot of moisture into the refrigerator. And obviously the whole culprit to this situation is moisture. So it's counterintuitive if we don't uh, make the refrigerator as dry as possible. I'm just gonna grab some towels that uh, the client uh, gave us. And I'm uh, just gonna wipe it all down. Now don't go super crazy with it. You don't have to get every little drop out, but as much as possible, wipe the walls. <clears throat> Top, sides, panel. As best you can. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to talk a little bit more about why this happens. And uh, you kind of have to think about your refrigerator as a, a big vacuum. And uh, when the refrigerator door is closed and the seals around the door um, <clears throat> are creating a really tight seal, no air from the outside is getting inside the refrigerator. Now, what happens is naturally when the fan turns on, it creates negative pressure. And uh, when that negative pressure happens, let me uh, get this light back on here. When that negative pressure happens, it uh, creates basically nowhere for the air to go other than the least point of resistance for the refrigerator, which is that little drain that's, uh, that's in the back of the refrigerator, the one that we just cleaned out. So what happens is any little particle that you might have in the refrigerator gets sucked into that drain and when it gets sucked in there and then the ice forms around it, it basically clogs your drain. So stuff like this, like uh, any little specks that you might see or all these little black dots or whatever, these are just little food scraps that naturally accumulate inside your refrigerator. So it's good practice that uh, we always recommend every couple of months that uh, you guys clean your refrigerator. Like, like this just came out of the refrigerator. I don't know what that is. It looks like a piece of cabbage or whatever. Um, the biggest like the worst thing that I've, the worst thing to have in the refrigerator, believe it or not, is onions because the little peels of the onions are light and fluffy and then they just get lifted up and get sucked into the back panel here. And I've pulled like big pieces of like the onion peels uh, from the back of the panels before. So anything that's light and fluffy will most likely get stuck the worst. So yeah, it's a, it's a design flaw with most of these refrigerators, but the reason they have those holes so small nowadays is because they're trying to be as efficient as possible. The less air that passes through the refrigerator, the more efficient the refrigerator will be. And unfortunately, um, efficiency over productivity nowadays 
If you look at your, if you have an old refrigerator in your grandma's basement or something like that, if you go and uh, open up her back panel and look up the, the drain in the back, the drain is probably like that big. It's, it's way bigger. They didn't care about saving electricity back then. They cared about it working forever. So, so that'll, uh, that'll wrap things up. I'm going to clean up here. I'm going to adjust you guys and show you guys um, putting the shelves back in, and then uh, we'll be all set. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start putting the shelves back. And uh, before the internet troll online that's watching me do this says, hey, that's not, how the, that's not how the shelf was put in. It was, that one was on the bottom, that one was on the top. Listen, I don't got a good memory, okay? And if the client doesn't like how I put the shelf back in, well then they can put it back how they like it because it's completely adjustable. There's different rails, different sections. I'm just gonna put it in how I think it looks best. So I'm gonna put this one on this side. Usually what I do is I put the, the flat ones on the bottom, little room on the bottom for lighter stuff or whatever. And then up here, cause it's more kind of arm level, I put the one that, that slides open, which is this one right here. So you guys can see this one slides open. Like so, and then see, let's say if you want to put a milk here or something like that, that's taller. So everything is kind of equal. You know, you have this side that's equal, this side that's equal, and this side that's roughly equal. And then uh, on the bottom, we'll put the containers. The refrigerated light turned off. Okay, and then we'll put this one. And that is about it. Uh, the client has all their food right behind the counter here, so I'll have them put it back how they desire. Uh, but that is it for this video, guys. Close this up and uh, let me adjust you guys real quick. So that is it for this video. Um, as you guys can see, the refrigerator door is closed. We have everything all set up. Everything should be working now. And uh, hopefully we don't have any further issues. Uh, the only other thing is the filter needs to be replaced. Hey Roger, did you have a replacement filter for this one? You know what, I, I, I should have bought one, I forgot. I, I have one, but I can't find it, I've been looking for it. Okay, well I'll show you how to do it later. It's pretty simple. Okay. But. Uh, but just for the viewers, uh, the refrigerator filter is down here. Oh, maybe we'll make another video about how to do that, but it's pretty simple. Uh, you basically just turn it to the left to unlock it. You pull it out and then you put uh, your new filter in. Sometimes it can be really finicky and uh, it could be really hard to take it out. So what you could do is you can just grab, grab your linesman and uh, put it on the tab here, twist it, put it, uh, take it out and then put it back in. And uh, over here, you'll go over here. There is a reset, which is, where is it? So on the alarm button, it says filter reset. You hold it for three seconds and then it'll reset the filter. All that really is, is just a, uh, not so a timer, a flow sensor. It's gonna sense uh, how much water you used and uh, based on the time and how long the filter has been used for ice and water and whatever it might be, it's going to, um, it's going to uh, turn that light back on. Um, Samsung uh, recommends, I think, every six months for it to be replaced, and they recommend, obviously, a factory uh, replacement that's completely up to you. Uh, when we went to the conference in Las Vegas, they said that uh, there's differentiations in pressure and how the unit runs, so they recommend it to be used just because of the quality and how well it works um, with their refrigerators. So uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, that's another video. Uh, if you guys uh, are new to the channel, uh, we're an appliance repair company up in San Francisco, and we recently opened up in the Los Angeles, Santa Clarita area. Uh, we're a family-owned business, and uh, we make these tutorials, tutorials just uh, uh, for the DIYer out there and just to gain trust with the community about our repairs. Uh, thank you so much, and have a great day.